If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we continue with a new set of interviews with Jerry Brainham, where in this video, Jerry details how to diet down for competition naturally, and the most scientific method to get ripped for natural bodybuilders looking to compete. Unknown to most, Jerry was a natural bodybuilder that was able to compete at over 200 pounds and won several competitions as a natural. In this interview, Jerry details the diets to use and those to avoid, and what modern science has to say about dieting for fat loss while sparing muscle tissue for maximum muscularity. Enjoy. Now that was my system back then. I'd bulk up most of the year, and then I would, uh, three, like I say, sometimes if I put on too much fat, I would give myself as much as six months to prepare for a contest. And I always, even back then, this was just in my own mind, but it's since then it's been proven in science studies that it's best to lose weight, gra uh, gra body fat gradually. You don't do crash diets. The, the, the quicker you try and lose weight, meaning if you, you drop your calories too much, especially if you're natural, mm -hmm. you're gonna lose a lot of muscle. You know, you, yeah. you, it's a shock to the body. So I followed a diet uh, to, to the extent that I dropped only about maybe one to two pounds a week. And believe it or not, this 50 years later, they showed that this is the best way for bodybuilders, you know, especially natural bodybuilders to get in shape. Don't try and crash diet. Do it to yeah. set aside enough time where you don't, you lose no more than uh, maybe a pound a week. And if you do that, you retain most, you'll retain 95% of your muscle with no drugs, yeah. you know, but I did it. I just did it on my own. I, I didn't have any science study. I just experimented and found that it worked best for me. When I tried the crash dieting, sure enough, you know, I lowered my calories to something like, you know, under a thousand a day. And I, you know, again, I was taking no drugs to, to stop the muscle catabolism. My muscles would shrink after about a month. I'd get smaller and smaller, you know, even though I was still training. So I learned by experience that I did that not to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I think uh, if you drop your calories way too much, your testosterone decreases Absolutely. dramatically. They've been and shown that in studies. Yeah, they've been shown. Yeah. They've uh, they've shown in studies. I remember uh, there was one uh, case study of a bodybuilder who kind of used the crash dieting technique for a contest, and his uh, his uh, I, I believe his testosterone level dropped seventy five percent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, think about it. Well, people don't realize that. You know, for example, there are a lot of diets where bodybuilders, in an effort to get more muscle definition, they'll cut out all dietary fat. Oh, which is that. ridiculous. You can't do that if you're a natural bodybuilder. Yeah. Because you need dietary fat to support testosterone. Yeah, to maintain your hormones. Right. Exactly. And there's only two types that maintain uh, uh, testosterone levels in males. And that's monounsaturated fat, such as found in extra virgin olive oil, various nuts. The other one, strangely enough, is saturated fat, yeah. which is considered the evil fat associated yeah. with heart disease, which isn't yeah. really true, but that's another yeah. story. Exactly. Those are too fat. <laughs> Fish oil fat and all the other fat, polyunsaturated, they won't help. you got to have yeah. those two kinds. That may take. Yeah. But, you know, a bodybuilder, again, who cuts out fat, and they're a natural disaster. Absolutely. <laughs> it's disaster. Absolutely. So that was Jerry Brainham on maximizing fat loss and muscularity for natural bodybuilders looking to compete. As we have heard from Jerry, science recommends that for natural bodybuilders, a maximum fat loss of one pound per week ensures that almost all muscle is kept, allowing one to retain most size. I have actually read similar advice given by the blonde bomber, the late Dave Draper. I remember that a young bodybuilder approached him and asked him the same question. To which Dave said, and I need to paraphrase Dave Draper here, quote, If you are planning to compete, begin preparing and dieting a year in advance, end quote. Jerry would begin dieting as early as six months before a competition, and of course, the length of dieting has much to do with how much fat is accumulated by each individual, so one needs to be self-critical about one's physique in order to optimize one's diet, especially a definition and cutting diet. Of course, 12 months of cutting might be too much and even unhealthy, 
but the point is to avoid a crash diet, and in this case, I believe both Jerry and Dave Draper are correct. Jerry clearly states that crash dieting is a horrible idea, and I agree, as such dieting will catabolize much of one's muscle, making one look gaunt and not full in competition, and take away from the size. Another horrible idea is the no-fat diet, which completely removes much needed fat from your diet, which contributes to our hormonal production. Again, Jerry is absolutely right. Both crash diets and no-fat diets can decrease one's testosterone by up to 75%, and studies do show this. So it is no wonder that feelings of depression kick in, and foul moods, and exhaustion also follow. It is no wonder why this sudden drop in testosterone and muscle mass loss was buffered by steroid protocols by golden era bodybuilders. A great example of this was the 1000 calorie diet that was followed by Danny Padilla, which I have already covered on this channel. In regards to using diuretics, there are many natural products available that are not synthetic and without nasty side effects if used correctly, and with the aid of a trainer and a medical practitioner. And these include things like green tea extract, caffeine, chamomile, dandelion, hibiscus, and many others. These will be discussed in a future video with Jerry Brainham. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video on how to diet correctly for natural bodybuilding competition. If you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and Jerry's of course as well, it's a great channel for more content like this, and click the bell button to be notified of future videos, and don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Also make sure to subscribe to the Applied Metabolics newsletter by Jerry Branham if you do wish to enhance your knowledge on bodybuilding nutrition, especially as a natural bodybuilder. More information is given in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about natural bodybuilding, hit me up for online coaching at www.goldenerabookland.com and also check out my website for ebooks on attaining maximum definition for natural bodybuilding competition. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Book I'm saying. Bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince, but to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with, and they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding.
To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That does no, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.